Good morning and welcome to Friday, uh, made world famous by my uncle, a Jack Daniels Friday. And after the week we've had, it's probably just a, just, just put Jack in there. Forget all about the coffee. It has been a crazy week. Uh, so many uh, things happening. Um, and, and I'm just glad it's Friday. Let's just put leave it at that. 800-951-0592. Joe Jaquin, Patriot Radio News Hour on this Friday. And we had the government's jobs number. We'll talk about that. We had uh, all kinds of different things. The trade, I guess I'll call it the trade war heating up. The president this morning saying that TikTok you know that's the uh, the kids. If you got uh, kids, you, you know what TikTok is. They they uh, make little dance videos. That's how, how I know TikTok to be. It's it's people dancing randomly. Uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, it's very popular apparently. Not not that uh, I know it. And something called WeChat. Now I know that the WeChat. It's another one of these app. You know they're apps. Uh, not that popular here in the U.S., but it, but it is popular uh, around the world. They're Chinese owned, and the the Trump administration, uh, after the Chinese essentially agreed to a trade deal, and then said, "By the way, we're not actually going to do anything we promised to do in it." The president is going after them uh, and saying that the Chinese are using it to spy. In other words, if you download these apps, the the way the story goes, and again, I don't know, I don't have these apps, but if you do have it, maybe you do have TikTok, that China has the ability to access your phone and take off all you know, take all your information. Now, obviously, if you're a 15 year old girl, right, uh, maybe the uh, Vogue uh, online magazine isn't a big deal. Right, or if you're a a ten year old kid and you're a big uh, Diamondbacks fan, they don't care. But you know, if you're a scientist and you're on TikTok because you want to monitor what your kids are doing, well, they can get into your phone and potentially get into your email and and uh, get access to potentially you know secret information or private information if you're a defense contractor. I mean, you understand. Right, they get access to the wrong person's phone. All of a sudden, now China can use it to steal, which we all know they love to do. Which boats the question: Why would we have allowed them in in the first place? Right? I mean, I, I guess I just start with that. Right? You know, wait a minute. And, and and again, these people are not our friends. This is a competition, and the rules are. There are no rules, right? China is more than happy to play, oh, well, you know, we're just dumb here. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll sign this document there. Okay, better? No, we're not actually going to, you know, honor these commitments, but do you feel better? And all the while, they continue to steal whatever that, whatever we don't give them. You know, you think about all the companies that have gone overseas and all the companies that have handed over all kinds of different technologies. Whatever we don't give them, they will take. And it's high time that somebody treated them like the adversary that they are, and that's Donald Trump. Now, do I like how he handled COVID? Uh, no. Do I like how he's handling the Chinese? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, by the way, they're also now going to target Uh, Chinese companies that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange for not following accounting rules to be on the stock exchange. In other words, if you want to list your company on the New York Stock Exchange, there's a bunch of hoops you got. You know, you can't. You don't just call up. You know, call up the NYSE and say, "Hey, yeah, I'm going to list my company here." I mean, it doesn't work that way. Right, you got to jump through all the hoops and, and make sure that uh, you know you're legitimate and blah 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 and launch an IPO and all that stuff. Why have we been allowing these Chinese companies to list on our exchange, have IPOs, 
have the all these people, you know, unsuspecting people buying their stock when we know that they're not actually following accounting rules that, that need to be followed uh, because, you know, let's face it, sooner or later you find out, oh, 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 sorry, it was a Ponzi scheme. They really didn't have the earnings. They really didn't do this, and they get wiped out. And unsuspecting Americans would get wiped out. I mean, these things are just uh, common sense. But here's where we were at today. So when this happens, the, the you always see the, the computers, when they see these things, in other words, escalation of trade tensions, they immediately, the dollar will rally, the dollar's uh, off the 92 level, uh, 93 and change. Uh, gold's off. We've I finally had some profit taken in gold. What We'll see if this leads to uh, a pullback that we've been hoping for. I don't know. We'll have to wait, you know what, to see what happens on Monday. But we've had a dollar rally because the thought is China's going to retaliate. And the way the algorithms are written on these computers, China will use its currency as a weapon. In other words, okay, well, we're just going to lower the renminbi and, and, and retaliate against. That actually isn't what they've been doing. But that's how the that's that's the old way of thinking. China has evolved. It's not it's a better adversary than it used to be. I'll tell you what they're actually doing when we get back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Put some more Jack. Forget the coffee. We'll be back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two Patriot Radio News Hour All American Gold dot com. I just got rattled the the opening thinking about Eric and uh, All American Gold dot com. Make sure you make that part of your 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 daily routine. Uh, shipping wise, we have we we've caught up significantly. So uh, orders are rolling. Uh, I've got. Most of uh, all of July pretty much done now uh, into August. I know Colorado, uh, they're even farther ahead. They're, they're actually pretty up to date. Uh, those of you that had uh, $5 liberties that we were shipping from Phoenix, those will leave Tuesday. Uh, and other than that, we're, we're, we're pretty much now caught up. There was a little delay there uh, as the silver is, is slow. So we've adjusted what we're doing here. Uh, the getting the actual tubes uh, to put the rolls of silver in uh, is very slow. So we're, we're adjusting those as well. In other words, you know, we're doing the same thing like with chains and toilet paper. Right? We're just ordering more and, and having them ship uh, sooner. But uh, we, are, we are pretty close to being caught up now, and we appreciate everybody's patience on that. Um, and as we move forward, I think, I think we've got a handle on it now. <laughs> Uh, so again, thank you to everybody. And like I said, five dollar libs. Uh, those of you waiting for those, uh, those will be out on Tuesday. Uh, and again, I think the silver situation, uh, we've got a much better handle on it today than we did uh, last week. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Before we get to the jobs data, and I told you it was going to be a big number. I, I was telling you a million plus. Uh, we got that. Uh, I'll break that down for you in a minute. But the big news, the big move, having to do with the Chinese and what has been happening uh, this time. You know, we knew about TikTok, and there's you know rumors that Microsoft is is going to be buying them. We'll see. You know, the the problem is what makes these these companies and these apps viable is the technology and so does microsoft uh have the the technology in-house uh to to keep developing and doing all those things i don't know you know we'll see uh the wechat thing now we're going after the chinese companies that have been listed on our stock exchange obviously logically we think the next step is are we going to ban our companies and our pension fund funds from investing in the Chinese stock market, uh, and and there's talk of that as well, and and again we are talking about how these algorithms work because this, this you know most people don't realize most of the trading now is done via the computer. They hire really smart people, 
right? And you know the ones. You know, they, they went to MIT. They went to the Ivy League schools. They went to, you know, uh, Stanford's and Cal Poly. And, and they're very, very, very smart people. And they write this, these codes. And when there's a press release, right, these press releases, the, the computer reads the press release, and based on the words that are in there, it'll start trading. So it starts firing off trades. Right? Anything having to do with tensions between us and the Chinese, and when we come out and say we're banning this or we're doing that or we're not going to do this, right, they immediately rally the dollar, which kind of thinks that it, it should be the opposite. But they rally the dollar, and, and you usually get a pullback in stocks and a pullback in gold, and that's what we have today. But here's what's interesting. If you go back for about the last year or so, year and a half, China hasn't used the renembi as the weapon that they could. Now, they ha do they have the ability to do it? Yes. Have they done it? No. Right now, the renembi is still below seven. You know, seven uh, renembi to the dollar. It's like at, at six, nine and change, which it's been there now since really the trade war heated up. Now, it, it, it was at a, it was getting ready to break six before the whole trade war thing. And it went from, you know, low sixes to high sixes, but that's kind of normal. And it really hasn't moved much since. And remember how I told you earlier this week, and it may have been like, you know, the weeks are just running all together. I think it was earlier this week, about how China's cross-border trade. In other words, this is trade with other countries has been shifting dramatically away from dollars. In other words, stuff that they used to buy in dollars. So let's just say they were buying cheese from the Swiss. Or they were buying shoes from the Italians, right? Or, or they are buying wine from the French. Maybe they were buying automobiles from the Germans. Stuff that they used to pay in dollars. They're now getting these countries to agree to take renembis. In the last 48 hours, the People's Bank of China and the Russian Central Bank made public the amount of cross-border trade now between those two countries that has moved away from the U.S. dollar. In other words, uh, this trend is gaining momentum. The Trump administration, which is ratcheting up sanctions on Russia and China, both countries and their central banks now have substantially diversified their foreign currency reserves. Right? We know Russia, they sold all their foreign, all their U.S., got out of the U.S. dollar almost completely. I mean, they have a little bit, but not a lot. China, China hasn't added to its dollar holding reserves in years. Years. Matter of fact, it's actually been selling a little bit of them. Got to remember, though, China needs to still trade with us. Obviously, we're not going to trade renembis with them. right? We don't want euros, right? So they've got to have dollars because, they, you know, we're still, you know, we're the, China's largest trading partner. Make no mistake about it. So they got to have it, but they haven't added in years. As a matter of fact, they've sold a little bit. They used to be the largest holder of our, of our debt. Now, now Japan is the largest holder of our debt. But that's not the big story. The big story is how they're getting rid of using the dollar with other countries. Back in September... The People's Bank of China and the Russian Central Bank began building their gold reserves, right? We know this, right? We saw where month after month, China and Russia kept adding to their gold holdings. And remember, you know, be your own central bank. 
But now it's gone even farther. Now they're saying that according to the People's Bank of China, the majority of trade between the Chinese and the Russians is being settled in something other than dollars. And let me, let me tell you how important this is. Just go back five years. Just going back to 2015, 90 to 95 percent of all trade between China and Russia was done in dollars. Right now, the number is down to approximately 40 percent. So that we've gone from 90 to 95 percent to 40, 40, 40 to 45 percent. So, I mean, we, we, they, they've essentially done uh, more than half of their trade is done in something other than dollars. And now they're saying, listen, we're working on the other 45 per, 40, 45%. Their goal between the two countries now is to get to the point where all trade between the two nations will be done in renembis or, you know, and I don't know if China will accept rubles or whatever it may be. But again, as we see this play out, and we talk about the cycle, you know, we've been talking about this since I've been back. We've been talking about the dollar entering a new 7 to 10 year cycle, and this is the, the down cycle of the dollar. One of the big factors in this is not just the fact that we're piling up the debt. Right this morning, there was a big debate on the idiot box about how the Republicans and the Democrats, why don't they just settle at $2 trillion and get the stimulus out? The Democrats want $3 trillion, the Republicans want one. Let's just do two and get it over with. And they're acting like $2 trillion is nothing. So you have massive amounts of debt on top of the largest you know, competitor to the United States. And we can argue uh, GDP. We can argue that. You know, you'll see our country and most of our economists will come out and tell you, we've got the largest economy in the world doing it in dollars. Hey, our GDP is $20 trillion. And China's GDP is only 13 or $14 trillion. See, ours is bigger. But if you tr don't track it in dollars, in other words, let's just use stuff. See, because our currency, keep it, it, the value is losing purchasing power significantly. But who consumes the most? Who who consumes the most automobiles? Who consumes the most oil? Who consumes the most cement, copper? Right, you name steel, iron ore. Who consumes more? Us or them? And the the simple answer it's the Chinese. So you can debate which economy is bigger. I, and and I will tell you in terms of stuff, China consumes more stuff than we do. But either way. You have the fading superpower and the emergent superpower doing this battle. And now China, instead of attacking the United States, old China, you know, as they're a country, because they weren't big enough yet, they used to use the renminbi as a weapon. They did. Right? They, they oh, we'll just lower it. We'll make it be, you know, we'll, we'll make the renminbi be less. And give us the advantage, right? Makes all of their all of their goods cheaper. In other words, if you're a U, if you were a U.S. company and you were manufacturing, you know, socks in the U.S., China weakens their currency, and you're like, well, we can't compete with the socks out of China. And you had two choices: you closed or you moved to China, one or the other. Either way, you you had to leave the United States. That that was how they used it as a weapon. They're not doing that anymore. Now they're 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 taking a different tack. Now they're going to all their other trading partners and saying, "Hey, 
You want me to buy that wine? You want me to buy the Italian shoes, the German cars, right? The Swiss cheese. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know they're, whatever it is that they're buying. Yeah, well, we need to do it at something other than dollars. And I'm going to tell you right now, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that would have been a hard no. It wouldn't even been, it would have been a hell no. The French or the Germans, the Portuguese, the Italians, would have been like, nope. Now what are they saying? Yup. Yes, we'll do that, sure. And again, this, we, this lessens their demand for dollars. We talked about how China hasn't been adding to their dollar reserves in years. Russia essentially just got rid of the dollar altogether. Now all of these other trading partners, same thing. Hey, we need less dollars because we're doing more trade in, in other currencies now. And again, this is why I think, you know, when we talk about this next cycle down in the dollar, this is another huge factor. China has changed tactics. And, of course, we're slow to realize, as usual. Yes, ma'am, by God be done. 800 Why haven't I talked about the jobs first? 1.86 million jobs created, according to the government. Because uh, it's bogus. Ah, I shouldn't say bogus. Um, but but the yesterday I warned you, it was going to be a big number, over a million uh, government was uh, a lot of jobs, things with the teachers, uh, and then uh, the hospitality in, uh, industry added almost 600,000 jobs. Uh, those, those are your bartenders and your waiters and your waitresses, and and now they've lost them again because of the shutdowns again, and back and forth, it, it's, it's a mess. Uh, we got to remember, they take the surveys in the first two weeks of the month, and then spend the rest of the time seasonally adjusting it all. And a lot of the places, like Arizona, right, they, they shut back down. They opened and then shut back down. Uh, but, but going forward, I think from here on out, we're going to see these numbers uh, be well back, back towards those normal type numbers that we were seeing. I think this is the last of the big numbers. And really, when you think about the government, uh, they said the unemployment rate was 10.1 or 10.2%. Uh, and, again, they just ignored the 17 million contract. We just totally ignored them. Uh, yesterday, I didn't even tell you yesterday, and I should have, uh, 32 million in change were collecting continuous unemployment claims, 32 million in change. And, of course, they, they told you on the TV yesterday it was 16 million in change. Uh, but, again... The unemployment rate, the U6 number. Remember, they collect six different unemployment numbers. Of course, they use the lowest one. Shocking. Hey, we got six different calculations, but we're going to pick the best one. The U6 number, uh, over 23%. And I think that's kind of really where we really are. So I'm not going to talk about it because it's not important to what we do. And when you're thinking about, you know, do I do – I, put more of my money into gold and silver, or maybe I'm thinking about buying gold and silver for the first time, we need to focus on the dollar. That's where our focus needs to be. And especially if you're like a lot of us, right? We like to have some cash on hand. You know, and I, I, I would tell everybody right now more than ever, don't go over 10000 Don't go over 10000 and the reason being, I don't. Sometime in the next ten years, okay, between now and say twenty thirty, cash is going to go away. Right? We're going to an electronic currency. Uh, the, that there is no doubt. The question is, what's the time frame? And and the time frame is going to be when the United States can no longer really service the debt. That's when it's going to happen. And you start thinking about, we're under huge pressure right now. Not only do we have a spiraling deficit, right? The thing, I mean, and obviously COVID had a huge part in this, but let's not kid ourselves. 2019, by all accounts, the greatest, you know, one of the greatest years ever. If you want to, you know, as Donald Trump would say. We ran a deficit, even uh, the, the fake number. 
was what, $984 billion? It was a trillion dollars. And that was supposed to be great times. And, of course, the real number was like $1.3 trillion. Now we're going to run, uh, who knows what the number is going to be, five, six trillion? I don't know. Something outrageous. The yields on these bonds, real yields, real yields, which is the yields you get after inflation are all negative. In other words, anybody buying, tra- you're losing money. And the fact of the matter is, how low can they go? Right? Because the only way you make money on bonds is if the yields go even lower. But then your real, you know, the people that need it to, that aren't just making a bet, hey, I need it because I need the dollar six months from now, a year from now, two years from now to buy all this stuff, their losses would be even bigger. So now you have a lot of people thinking, eh, bonds probably aren't for me right now. But the easy money got made in the bonds. When we remember we had that ten year note at like, I don't know, one, two, one, three, something like that. Now it's back to, you know, it's a half of a percent. You know, you made some good money on that drop. Of course, that brought real yields to negative now. Now you have the world's largest trading partner. I mean, I think the only two countries we trade more with is Canada and Mexico. I think that's it. I think everybody else, I think, everybody else trades more with China than they do with us. Is now actively getting countries to drop cross-border trade in dollars, which means now they need less, which means, hey, I don't need to buy as many bonds as I used to. And at the same time, it's going up. The yields are negative. I mean, this is a, a perfect storm for the and the reason why I'm so confident we're getting ready. We're entering this new cycle, a new, a new down cycle. And remember, the, the first down cycle ended at 84. The second down cycle ended at, at like 72. This down cycle, right, we're looking, you know, somewhere. I'm hoping we stay in the 60s. And so within the next 10 years, that move is going to happen. And at that point, all the cash that isn't in, we're going to have to put it in. Right? Because we need the electronic credits. Because, you know, essentially what they'll do is eventually say, okay, you have until X day. Right? And maybe they give six months or, or a year. You know, they'll, they'll, but they'll give a time limit. And they'll say, okay, all that money needs to be in the bank. Right? Think about all the change people are hoarding, right? It's got to go all to the bank. And I, my, my thinking is, if you show up at a bank and you've got more than $10,000, they're going to make you fill out a form. That's what I think. Right? Hey. And you know what? You won't even fill it out. The teller will automatically. Oh, hey, uh, Schmuck, Joe Schmuckatelli. Schmuckatelli was just in here, just put in $50,000 of cash into his bank. Right? And I'm sure, right? The boom, with the, you know, boom, boom, click, click, enter, boom. IRS, here you go. Right? Hey, how did Schmuckatelli get $50,000 in cash? Right? Where did that come from? That, that's what I think is going to happen. So I would tell you all, and I listen, I keep cash just like a lot of us do because right now that's what you need to buy things. And if, you know, who knows, an EMP attack, anything could happen, right? Power grid failure, right? You may need that cash to get stuff. Same thing why we hold gold and silver. I'm telling you, don't keep more than 10 grand because if they do and that day comes, they're going to want to know where it came from. And how do you prove it? Especially if you've been saving it for years. You know, hey, every every few months I add to it. Just something to think about. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 uh, Gold's down 30. Silver's down about 50 cents. Now, before we get too excited... Yesterday afternoon at about, this is, we're talking 2, 3, 4 o'clock Arizona time. 
uh, December Gold, which is the contract you see on TV, uh, hit two thousand and ninety-seven, ninety-eight dollars, basically twenty-one hundred dollars. Silver almost hit thirty dollars. It was twenty-nine dollars and ninety some odd cents. And then we had some profit taking ensued from there. And then, of course, uh, the, the the China thing just just if if you look at it, it was about six thirty this morning. Where and and that's Arizona time, so that had been nine thirty New York time uh, when uh, massive the computers did a massive sell on on Trump's news about WeChat and TikTok. Uh, but uh, profit taking here in in gold and silver after both of them. Obviously, gold hit another new high. Silver, uh, thirty dollars. It hasn't been thirty dollars in 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 years. So another uh, multi year high in silver. Um, we'll see. We'll have to wait for Monday to see if this is going to be uh, something other than just profit taking. At least right now, all the wholesalers out there are leaving their prices the exact same. Uh, they're just, you know, if I need to sell to them, they're just going to pay me less. But they're they're not convinced yet that there's anything but, uh, uh, com- I guess, computers uh, selling some gold contracts. We'll wait and see, see what happens on Monday. Yesterday, we had the lead pipe stone cold lock of the week on the AU $10 Liberties. We sold out. Didn't even make it through the show. Then yesterday afternoon, I was able to get more for, you know, and I, I was trying. I was reaching out to different wholesalers, and I was getting no, 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 no. Uh, then yesterday afternoon, I, I we got 50 more. Uh, then the Colorado Front Range Show ran. We sold 35 of those. I've got 15 AU $10 libs from yesterday. They're still at 1150 There's only 15. I don't have any more than that, and I'm not getting any more. Uh, but if you want them... Uh, they're at 11:50 uh, this morning. I got a call from another wholesaler. Uh, he had five dollar libs. Remember the last time we ran five dollar libs at 5.95? That was like a hundred dollars in gold ago. I've got fifty-five dollar libs at 5.95 today. So on this pullback here, eight hundred nine five one. 0592 the AU $10 lib if you're like which one it, you know it depends on what you're looking to do if you're saying hey what's the best price per ounce that's that AU 10 but we only got 15 of them and the phones already Sarah and Arlene both are already on the phone I don't know how many will be left uh, 15 AU 10 libs at 1150 the $5 libs I got 50 50 $5 libs at 595 and we've got one line open at 800-951-0592. So uh, that's kind of where we had. So we had uh, the the $100 level. And that's how I kind of feel about gold right now. Because now that we're at new all-time highs, there's no, uh, you know, the charts. You, you have to use psychological numbers now. So uh, I think every $100 or so is a chance for a pullback. You know, so we hit... $2,100 yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. Uh, silver hit $30 yesterday afternoon. Uh, had a pullback. I think they'll be brief. And then, you know, the next one, you know, at $2,200, at $2,300, you know, at $100 increments. Uh, and silver, right now, you know, probably $5 increments, right? 30 and then maybe 35 and 40 And, and we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Yesterday, uh, I was telling you about ETF holdings. Now, the highest levels ever, over 3,300 metric tons in ETFs. So you remember, every every ounce that they have in storage, that's worth 10 ounces. So right now, the public around the world is saying, we want 33,500 metric tons of gold and, and that there just seems to be unrelenting. And just one metric ton, just so you know, that's 32,150 ounces. So every metric ton, 
is 32,150 metric ounces. And now we're seeing like the Comex having to deliver over 100 tons of gold a month. It's just incredible. Uh, You know what? I'll have to say this. This is another one that worries me. You know, we got the jobs number today, and I told you it didn't. it's really not worth talking about because a lot of people, they counted as having a job. By the end of the month, lost the job again. Uh, California just a- actually said that's exactly what happened in their state. Uh, but now, uh, news out about how many Americans entered August with unpaid housing bills. They're saying that the number of missed payments, many Americans with unpaid rent or mortgage obligations. So this is the first time we get a study, both of them together, rent and mortgages together. They're saying 32%. That's incredible. One in three have either missed a mortgage payment or a rent payment heading into August. They said half of renters with unpaid rent owe less than a thousand. So half of the renters, right, this is your low, right, this is your hourly minimum wage people. The other half obviously owe more than that. And they're saying that above 5,000, so this is the high end people, they're saying that 6% of those people haven't paid. If your rent was between two and five thousand, that was eleven percent. Just something to the interesting number, though. How are we going to deal with that? We can't have a third of people not paying. What about all the debt behind those? Yeah, I know, right? Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Pizza Radio News Hour. We'll be back for the final segment. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The AU ten lips are gone again. This time they're gone f- for good. I, I there's I, I called every wholesaler in the country yesterday uh, that we have relationships with. So those are done. The AU ten libs are gone. Uh, the AU five libs. There's still thirty eight left. Thirty eight of the AU or not AU. I'm sorry. They're not AU. Take scratch that. P- apologize. Five dollar libs. Five ninety five. There's 38 of those left at 800-951-0592. And we've really been we've been talking about the dollar, talking about cash. How long do we have? I don't know. I, it, it's hard to gauge, right? We know that at the end of this year, at the end of 2020, we'll be somewhere around $30 trillion in debt. We've still got this stimulus now. It looks like a trillion's out. Right, that's not going to happen. So we're going to end up with a number between two to three trillion, and that that puts us at thirty, maybe a little over thirty. I don't know. My fear is that before the end of the year, we're going to need more. Who's going to bail out commercial real estate? If these reports are accurate now, saying that one in three have missed at least one rent or mortgage payment heading into August, right? We got a problem, right? It looks like to me commercial real estate's going to need a bailout. Uh, residential now could be a man. What about apartments? I don't know about you, but this town, dude, everything that's under construction in this town is some kind of apartment, a condo. I mean, it, it, they're everywhere. The money for that will dry up. Right? If all of a sudden uh, 33% of renters aren't paying the rent, right, they're going to stop building I mean, that's just what's going to happen, right? Uh, so so it's going to be very interesting. But going forward, what does it look like? How much debt are we talking about next year, the year after, right? And again, already I had said, remember, before COVID, by the time we get to 2030, we're going to be running 3 and $4 trillion debts. That was pre-COVID. Now I'm thinking to myself, my, my guess is next year's debt will be somewhere around $3 trillion. 2022, I think $3 trillion is going to be the kind of like the new number. And then by 2030, it could be $5 trillion a year. Because you got to remember, we still got to service all the debt we already have. So I think our window 
is closing. So just be careful. It's not like it's going to happen tomorrow. You know, if you've got, you know, forty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars in cash in your safe at your house, right, you may want to start making plans to get that number below ten thousand, uh, because that's just my guess. You know, and we, we look at other countries when they've done it, that's exactly, you know, when Russia did, that's exactly what happened. You showed up at the bank in Russia with all this cash. They want to know, remember Cyp Cyprus? Remember them? Remember Greece? Same types of things that happened. And then the problem is, is what's the value? Right? And let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, that you have, uh, you put all your money in the bank and blah, blah, you got $100,000. And your 401k, same thing. Maybe you got $100,000 in your 401k, you got $100,000 in the bank. What's it worth? Are they going to do, well, the electronic credit is worth more. So that 100000 is now 50000 electronic credits. I mean, we don't know. That, that remains to be seen. They can devalue our money again, which is what I think they would do as well. We'll have to talk more about that in another show next week as well. Patriot Radio News Hour. 800-951-0592 is the number. I'm off on Monday. I'll be back on Tuesday. Everyone take care. God bless. Have a great weekend.